Good morning and welcome this glad Easter morning. I'm Stephen Price, pastor of First Baptist Church of Hyattsville, and we are happy that you have joined us this morning. If you are a member of our congregation, you have received an order of worship that was posted both on email and on our Facebook page. And so I invite you to join with me now in our call to worship in unison. O oh God, who raised Jesus on that first Easter morning, we come to praise your name. Like those disciples, we are afraid and anxious about what will come. We are almost afraid to trust that you will triumph even over coronavirus and death. But we risk trusting you this morning. Help us, like them, to overcome our fear and risk sharing the good news that Christ is risen. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth reply. Alleluia. Please join with me in our prayers for the people. O oh, holy loving God, this Easter morning we raise to you all those places of our lives that we once thought were dead. The broken dreams, the wounds, the concerns we have for those we love, we raise them into the light of your resurrection this Easter morning. We pray, O oh God, that you would bring resurrection to our nation and to our world in this pandemic. That you would come closer to us and bring resurrection in our lives. Fill us with the knowledge that you have conquered death. And in the risen Christ, we may find new life for us all. We pray in his name who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear these burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. As a congregation, this is where we pass the peace in times of health. And I would ask you that following this service, you pass the peace to someone you know. Just text them this morning or email them this morning and say, Christ is risen. Peace be with you. Our scripture this morning is from Mark 16. The first through the eighth verses. And I am reading from the New Revised Standard Version. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James 
and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week they went to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll the stone away for us? And looking up, they saw that the stone was already rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified? He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they had laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had come upon them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This Easter morning, as we remember through Mark's words what happened, we're a little shocked by the phrase, they said nothing because they were afraid. You can't really blame them, though. This was not an ordinary burial anointing that they were doing. The Romans had arrested, tortured, and executed Jesus, and while crucified, fictions were not unusual, this was most likely the first time that it had happened to someone they knew so closely. It was a crushing and traumatic experience. Some of these women had watched him die. They were pleased and lucky, actually, because Joseph of Arimathea had summoned up his courage and used all his political clout to get Jesus' body. You see, most crucified bodies were thrown into mass graves, further dishonoring them by denying them the proper Jewish burial. And so here they came, these women doing what women through the centuries in all cultures have done, taking care of the dead. They had waited until the Sabbath was over, and they came, slowly, perhaps in tears, wondering how they were actually going to be able to get into the tomb, but they were there to do their job. We have recently seen the pain of those who have lost loved ones to the coronavirus. Loved ones for whom they cannot even have a funeral properly, who have said goodbye over video chats and cell phones. Perhaps this Easter morning, more than any other in our lifetime, we can understand how Mary the mother of James, Mary Magdalene, and Salome felt as they walked to the tomb. But when they got there, when they got there, the tomb was empty. The stone had already been rolled away, and a young man dressed in white, we're told, said to them, he's not here. In other Gospels, the angel says, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. I, I don't know what kind of shock that must be. To be yanked out of that kind of traumatic grief into 
an announcement that the one you loved, the one you have come to anoint for burial, is alive. And they were told to go tell the disciples and Peter. Listen to that emphasis. Peter, who Jesus had said to, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you. And when you have turned, when you have repented, strengthen your brothers. Go tell the disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. And for a while, their fear kept them from saying anything. And when they did, they, they weren't believed. In, in fact, another gospel says they were not believed because they thought it was just idle women's chatter. And we can still understand that, the refusal to believe women's truth. In fact, in Mark 16, 14, we're told that when Jesus comes to the disciples, he scolds them for not believing what they were told. This is not the plausible end to a sweet religious story. Sometimes it's as though we have heard this story so often that it just goes by us and go, yes, this is the day that Jesus rose from the dead. He got up. The one who was dead opened his eyes, kicked the stone away, and walked out into our world alive and ready to give life to us. It is not the plausible end of a sweet religious story because it is God moving among the horrors of torture, blood, and death to act for our sake. Do we believe, really believe, the truth that God raises the dead? That God is present working on our behalf even through the most horrible of situations? Through the crucifixions of our lives? The coronavirus? The small daily deaths that haunt us? God's resurrection and new world begin at that tomb. If he did not rise, you and I, as Paul said, are the most pitiful to be pitied people in the world. But if we do believe, if we believe that this story is true, we can look with hope for what is happening even now among us. We can love one another and care for one another in creative ways even while we are apart. And we can imagine and implement new ways of being the body of Christ when we come back together. For the great resurrection that happened that Easter morning gives birth to little resurrections every day, even here and now. So are we now where Christ has led. Alleluia. Following our exalted head. Alleluia. Made like him, like him we rise. Alleluia, ours the cross, the grave, the skies, Alleluia. Please pray with me. Oh God, as we go from this place, 
we pray that you would go with us as we end our worship this morning we pray that you would take us into this new day that you would give us courage and strength to follow you into the light of your love and your world. We pray in your name. And so go from this place, strengthened by the knowledge that in the goodness of God you were born, by the watchfulness of God we are kept all the day long, and in the love and mercy of God we are all being redeemed and made whole. You have won it all for me and I strive, we are healed. Eyes now past hands, we're free. Eyes blood, we're washed clean. And now we have the victory. And the power of sin is broken. Yes, he did. He has won. Yes, he has. It all. So every voice we sing hallelujah on the victory. I'm so glad that he's alive. Thanks.